you'll do this on a lot of skirts, period skirts. So the way you do it is you need to get a big chunk of fabric and you fold the top about three or four inches down. And to get give yourself volume, some things might call for a bit more volume, others won't, depending on your the weight of your fabric. So if this was like a dupion and I wanted it to look thicker, I'd put a layer of demet in it. Or you can use ice wool's good. It's very light and like delicate, but it gives you the volume. So depending on how thick you want it to look, this is demet. This was the old bit of the, So there's demet, there's bump, there's wincyette, they're linings. I'll show you it in a bit. I'll get I'll get a little sample out and show you. But this is demet, it's like the medium weight one. So you what you do, you put it in your top of your skirt. You, usually it's on the straight and you fold it down, but you might have to graduate down the front. You know where they got a point? Because if you just do it straight and put it on, it'll come out like a boat. So you'll have to graduate it down. So that area where you graduated it down, you'll have to face it. But I'm just showing you on the straight for now. So, because a lot of them will just do it on the straight. And then the bodice will sit over top. So you leave a smooth bit there. But some of them call for you to follow the shape of the bodice, the point, and that's when it gets tricky. You've got to grade it down, and but you'll have to figure that out for whatever you're doing at the time. So you'll do little samples like this to figure it out. So first, I've got my top fabric, and I folded it down about three or four inches, and I put some demet in to give it some volume. So I bumped it up into the crease. Yeah? So is that just one flat piece that's not folded over? Yeah, this is just one flat piece. So, the reason for, the, for this demet to be this long, it acts as a kick out. So can you see? It kicks out to there and then it falls down. So when you put it onto your waistband, you stitch it on like that. And this gives you the maximum kick out of pleating because when you do knife pleats they'll lay flatter yeah box pleats will come out a little bit because they'll box I'll show you them in a minute they'll come out a little bit thicker than a knife pleat would and this gives you maximum volume because you're going to stitch it at the top edge on your waistband and it kicks out and the demet underneath acts as like a buffer so instead of it just dropping here, this acts like a buffer to soften it, yeah? So, how you do that, come down here everybody. First of all, so I put my demet in, yeah? I've folded my fabric over, ironed it, and I've made, for each pleat that I have, I've got to decide how deep I want it. So for an inch pleat, I've used my ruler and I've marked an inch. And then the next one, and I want to grade it down because you don't want to pleat round your skirt an inch deep and then it stops and it's just a big ditch. You want it to graduate into the front to that flat bit, yeah? So you need to grade them down. So the first one I've done is an inch deep. So I've done them an inch part. So I've done two, can you guys see down here? I've done two parallel dots. So I've measured with my ruler, them an inch part, and then go about an inch away and do another line. Depending on the thickness of your fabric, normally you do two lines of dots. If you've got really heavy furnishing fabric, you might do a third line. And it helps control it when you bring it up. So I've done... To do four one inch pleats, I've done eight dots, and then I've gone to three quarters, and then I've gone to a half inch, to a half inch here, and then a quarter. On here, a quarter was too thick with the demet. 
So let me pull it up. So I want it to graduate like this. Yeah, so it comes down into the front bit of my, my skirt and just kind of disappears and then my bodice sits over like that. Yeah, so I don't want it to just stop dead like that. And then my bodice is like that. It looks doesn't look nice. You want it to graduate into it. So for here, I've done an inch, three quarters, half inch. A quarter was a little bit too too shallow, so I probably would just go to the half inch on this one. But if it was if I was doing it without the demet in between. Then I could go to the quarter, yeah? So you've got to take the fabric that you're using on its own merit. So you need to make a sample first of what you're using to see how deep you want them. How much fabric's going to fit into that area. So for this area here, for four pleats. So two, four. So about to here. I need that much fabric to do four pleats to make an inch. So, you know, that's how you figure out how much to go around. So you figure out how much fabric you got to round and then if the, the inch pleat's leaving you with, once it's gathered up two less, then you'd go down to a three quarter, yeah? Does that make sense? When you start doing that, you'll realize what I'm... Yeah, so you need double threads. Big needles. And with a double thread, you know the way you used to double thread one end in and you go like that and tie a knot? Forget that, because that leaves you a weak point. You're going through stuff and then it ends up snapping there. Double thread now, use your two raw ends through the eye of the needle. So on this first one, I'm going to loop through that that loop yeah and then I don't have a big ugly knot and then I'm just gonna go in out right another double thread for the other one and then if you got a third one do the third one as well but it'd have to be quite heavy fabric, like velvet or something, to do through it. Double thread. <coughs> through your loop. And exactly the same, in, out. Don't go opposite. get them even I can pull them up <laughs> yeah and then I can carry on I've got some more string to play with if you've got a straight petticoat, this is a quick way to get your rough pleats into it. My pleats are so bonkers, I've got to go. I looked at them again and she like gave me an alright mark for my pleats and they are so bonkers. Like, they are so completely off. Like, so yeah, so basically you end up with this. Yeah, and it's graduated. So now you want to put them onto a waistband. When you guys have your waistbands for theatre, always find the middle. Do an inch, do a little pleat and sew it in. This is so that you got alterations. 
you can alter it. And then when you put your India tape, you do exactly the same. And then you butterfly one one way and one the other inside. And then that way they need to come and make a quick alteration. They need a bit extra, they just undo them, loosen a few pleats, and it's done without having to take the whole waistband off. So you usually do it on the center back, or you can do two on the side. Yeah, and then your, your fronts, make sure you turn them back, give yourself a couple of. These are the different waistbands. This is the good stuff. It doesn't, Judy sells it in the shop, and it doesn't give. They stopped making it for a long time. They've just started getting it back now. So it, it's just a hard waistband. So ask Judy, she'll know what you're saying, the black and white one, sir. Or we use the millinery Petersham, it's a bit thicker. But there is a little bit of give in that. So, I mean, if you can get this is better, but it's murder to sew. <laughs> so for, just for your, um, I think it's a bit more expensive as well. Just use this for your sample. So when you're sewing it on, again, you need, let me take one of these needles. So I want you to make a little sample like this and I want you to add it to a waistband. So double thread again. I usually do, I thread it through one end and then tie the other end. And, and doing it this way, you can get away with a longer thread as well. So it's a better way of doing it. So when you put figure out, so you don't cut your strings off. Where am I? Just wrap them around a pin because you might need them. You might need to shallow it out. You might need to, you know, move it. And plus, you can move them out of the way while you're working, and then bring them back. Yeah, so don't cut that off. Just keep some of it. So when you're adding it to your waistband, some people, you can put them like this, or you can put them down and they just kick out. I'll show you first. Just lay it along the top edge and go on the end of each do a couple of stitches and then go along decide how far away you want them go in the back of the Petersham because you don't want a diagonal stitch going across you don't want to see it so two stitches is enough so it's almost like a like it's looking. Yeah, you're just going along the back of it instead of um, and I'm just going to them. so you could count the little notches there if you wanted to be really, really precise. It's per each plate. You tack into each plate. Yeah, the top edge of each plate. So it'll be like that. So they can either be like this on the waist or mostly they'll be like that. And then it leans against the Petersham. So you can see why this harder Petersham would be better for a cartridge pleading. And then it sits, that's your waistband and it helps it kick out. Yeah, and you can see the demets kind of cushioning so it's not just dropping off a cliff. Yeah? Yeah, so that's your cartridge pleading. That's the hardest one.